Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan. I'm one of the librarians here at the Cedar Rapids Campus Library. And today we're going to be talking about how to find resources from uh, the Kirkwood Library website. So to get started, I'm going to share my screen. And there we are. Uh, we're here at the main Kirkwood homepage. And to get from here to the library website is actually pretty easy. If we just scroll all the way down, uh, our link is in the second column on the bottom. You just click that link right there that says library, and that'll take you to our home page. Um, a few things I want to point out here on the home page. Uh, first of all is uh, this chat button. You can click this if you are working from home or even out there at the center, basically anywhere. Uh, you click that button and it'll open up a live chat window and you can type in a question. Uh, whomever the library is on duty will respond to your question and try to work with you in real time to try to get uh, whatever issue you're experiencing resolved. That is available anytime that there is a library working the desk. And you can see over here are our hours, Cedar Rapids and Iowa City campuses. Um, Monday through Thursday, we're listed as being open from 9.30 to 11. And while that's true, there's only a librarian here until 9.30 p.m. So from 9.30 p.m. on, there will be no librarian here to take your questions. And while that's the case, uh, the button for the chat will change to say, click here to email a librarian. If you click it, it'll open up an email form and you can uh, send that to us. We'll get back to you as soon as we are able to the next morning. If you click this contact us link here at the bottom of the page, that will take you to uh, our phone numbers, uh, another way to get a hold of us. Research number is the one that you will call to get in contact with the librarian for help with research, citations, whatever it may be. Circulation is uh, the number that you would call if you want to renew a book, for example. Okay, so we've tried to make it as easy for you as we can for you guys to get a hold of us when you need help, and please don't hesitate to do so, okay? That's why we're here. Uh, we like talking to students, so um, if you're struggling, you know, don't be afraid to contact us. Okay, now I'm going to show you our catalog very quickly. Um, this big box right here is our uh, link to our WorldCat catalog. Called that because it literally links out to um, libraries all over the world. So we can see what you know libraries all over the world have uh, in their catalogs. Um, when you do your initial search, it will just look for stuff held by Kirkwood first, which is a good thing. And it will search uh, for books, articles, videos, sound recordings, all types of stuff. So uh, it's not just for books. So to use this and any of our databases, when you begin your search, you want to make sure that you're only using keywords. Um, and by that, I mean usually nouns that are descriptive of um, what it is you're looking for. So you don't want to put in questions or like your entire thesis. Okay, so you, uh, you don't want to say, like, how does climate change affect the oceans? You just want to limit yourself to climate change and oceans. And the reason is because if you don't do that, um, it will try to search for the question words and everything, and you probably aren't going to get uh, very many results, if any at all. So for my example, we're just going to put in climate change and oceans and see what we get. Okay, so at the very top of the page, you can see here that it says that we got almost 17,000 results held by Kirkwood Libraries. That's quite a lot. Um, so it's going to uh, list everything based on how close the, the system thinks that uh, the work is to your search terms, okay? So we can see that the first one here, Climate and the Oceans, is an ebook published in 2012. And, uh, written by Jeffrey Vallis. So this is the author, and directly below the author, it will always tell you the format of the work you're looking at. This one is an ebook. Um, ebooks are nice for distant students, such as yourselves, because they can be accessed anywhere that you have an internet connection. Simply click View Ebook, and um, you'll be taken to a screen that looks just like this, where you'll have to enter your K number and EagleNet password in order to go on. 
And the reason that comes up is so the system makes sh make sure that um, you are supposed to have access to these materials. Since I am currently on the uh, main Kirkwood network, when I click view ebooks, it's not going to ask you that. But I want, do want you to know um, that if you click that to, to get into there um, or any of the article databases, you'll have to um, enter your K number and email and password in the screen just like that. Okay, so I'm going to click view ebook. And it takes us to the record for the ebook. We can see the title right here. Uh, it also lists the author again, publication date. Oops, I didn't mean to click the author. That's going to do a search for that. Anytime you um, click any of these links, it's going to do, the system's automatically going to do a search for those things. So, um, description of the book is listed, which is kind of nice because if you read through the description, that'll help you determine whether or not that it's something that you actually want to use. Uh, subjects and categories for this uh, particular book. Over here on the um, right hand side of the screen are a bunch of tools that you can use. And these tools can be used for ebooks or journal articles, whatever. So, um, first, I want to draw attention to uh, this one. This is Permalink. A lot of students make the mistake of they want to get back to an article or an ebook that they looked at before. And so they copy this um, address here in the address bar. Um, that is not unfortunately going to work for you. If you do that, uh, it just won't work. So what you have to do if you want to um, use a link to get back to something that you looked at before is use what they call permalink. So um, this link right here, you click that, and it will open up a permalink. Copy and paste that in, and you can use that permalink to get back to a resource at another time. That's the only way that it'll work for you. In addition to that is a citation tool. You can click that and scroll through and select um, the type of uh, citation that you're using for a class, probably MLA or APA. Now, while the information that these citations contain is usually good, it's, it's usually accurate, um, they're not always complete or properly formatted. For example, I can tell right now that this APA citation for this ebook is not complete because it doesn't say, um, uh, it doesn't include a link to the book. It doesn't say, you know, um, found in or, uh, uh, you know, where, where they got it. So whoever's reading your paper can't get back to it. Um, and while the MLA one, just on first glance, looks pretty good to me, it is not formatted correctly. I can tell that this is not double spaced and it may not be 12 point font either. So if you're going to use these citation format tools, um, you know, you can go ahead and do that, but don't just expect that you can copy and paste it and be done. So you'll have to um, do some work with formatting. And uh, a little bit later, I'll show you guys tools um, for how you can do that. Uh, and additionally, is this Google Drive. Uh, link right here, and if you have a Gmail account or any other kind of Google account, you can click this and um, you know, put in your Google credentials, and it will save this uh, citation, this resource, right into your Google Drive. And this is really nice and handy because you can do that um, for all of the references that you're working on for a project. You can create a folder with all your references right there in one place and get back to them very easily. A lot of our uh, databases are starting to offer that, which is, which is a very cool thing. Okay, um, so one of the things I like about ebooks is that uh, the table of contents is completely hyperlinked, meaning that um, you can just, with a click here, get into one of the chapters that um, might be of interest to you. You just click the link for the chapter, and it will take you uh, right to that chapter. Once you're in there, you can you know, read the chapter on the page. Uh, and you can also print pages, uh, email pages to yourself or someone else, or uh, save the pages. Now, when you do one of these options, um, let's say I want to print some pages out, this uh, dialog is going to open up, and it's going to tell me a page limit, uh, how many pages are available from this book to uh, print or save, right? So uh, this particular title only allows me 40 pages, all right? And after I printed 40 pages, it's just not going to let me print any more from this book. 
this number changes. Uh, I've seen it, some books with as many as a hundred page limit, which is pretty generous. And then, you know, down to, I think 20, maybe 40 is the, the minimum uh, limit there. But just be aware of that. Um, an, another nice feature is that it'll always give you this option to print just this section, which means that it will just print everything from the current chapter that you're looking at. So if all I you know, want from this book is chapter five, I can just click this uh, section, print PDF. It's going to create a, a PDF copy of this on my computer that I can then go ahead and print. Okay, I think that's about it for eBooks. Uh, I can just, instead of clicking into the table of contents, I can also just click PDF full text and that'll just bring up the, the whole uh, book for me and I can you know, browse through it by clicking through the pages that way. All right, back to our catalog of uh, results here. So um, you see a lot of eBooks up front. That's not uh, too surprising. We have over 175,000 ebooks in our collection, so a lot of results are going to be ebooks. Uh, but right here, number six is actually, we can see a print book published in 2016. Um, you can see if we compare it to this ebook um, line that it looks a little bit different. It still says held by Kirkwood Community College Libraries, which means that we have it here. But instead of the view ebook button, it has an availability line. This tells me if the book's available. If it is not, it will have, I think, a red X there, and it'll say checked out, and it'll give me a date. So you can uh, use that to determine whether or not you want to wait for the book to come back in, or if you want to move on and find another resource. In addition, it'll tell you um, where it's held. So this one is held at the main library, which is the Cedar Rapids campus. Uh, occasionally, you'll see uh, some things here that'll say the Iowa City uh, as well. And then finally, it'll give you the Dewey Decimal call number, which is like the house address of a book on the shelf, right? I know you guys are out at a regional center. Uh, if you do see a print book that you would like, it doesn't mean that you're going to have to drive all the way to Cedar Rapids to get it. What you can do to get the book is click on the title. That will take you into the record here. And then you're going to see this button that says a request center delivery, right? Um, once you click that, You'll be taken to a screen that'll ask you for, guess what, your K number, Eagle Net password. Enter that. And then um, this screen will come up. So you say you just need a copy. Make sure you check the box. If the book is held in two locations, like Sea Rapids or Iowa City, um, you can check whichever. Um, and then make sure that you list your pickup location. So I'm going to choose Jones County Regional Center in Monticello. All right, then you can hit submit. Once you do that, our circulation folks will see that. They'll pull the book from the shelf for you, put it in campus mail, and send it out there to uh, Jones Regional Center. Um, it usually takes about a day or two for things to get out there to you. Uh, it just depends on the time of day that you um, you know, submit your request because it has to be put to campus mail. So that's how you can get, um, you know, physical books delivered there to Jones County. Now, um, let's just say uh, that I'm looking for stuff and um, all the 16,845 results, I can't find anything that I think is going to work for me. All right. What uh, you can do then is use these limiters on the side here. And instead of just searching for community college libraries, I can check this box and actually search for libraries worldwide. Once I do that, you're going to see that things change. It will still show uh, results from Kirkwood, but not only results from Kirkwood. So you see, uh, for example, this uh, second result right here, climate process and change, uh, it says held by corridor libraries. The corridor library is anything within the um, Interstate 380 corridor. So uh, at least one library within that uh, area has it. So if this is a book that I'm interested in, but not held by Kirkwood, again, I can click on the title and that will open it up. Um, but now the place that used to say uh, click here for center delivery now says request this. Okay. And it also lists libraries from 
in ascending order from how far away they are from us. You can click the request this button and what that's going to do is open up this, this short form. Just need to fill in this uh, stuff in red um, and make sure that you choose a pickup location. It defaults to Cedar Rapids, but you want to make sure that you say Jones County Regional Center. Um, fill out that form and, and hit submit and then we will process an interlibrary loan request for you which means that we will um, ask libraries who actually have that item, probably in order from how far away they are to send it to us and then we will get it to you. Uh, there's no charge for this, but it can take some time depending on how far away the library is. Uh, anywhere from you know two or three days up to a couple of weeks if it has to come from somewhere far away like Washington State or Maine or something like that, right? All right, so that's how you um, search the catalog outside of Kirkwood and request interlibrary loans. In addition to the location um, limiters, you can also limit by format. So if you're just looking for articles, you can click the articles uh, box and then it'll just bring up articles relating to your topic. And I'm still on libraries worldwide. Articles instead of the ebook will say view full text and you can uh, click that and it will take you into the article much the same way that it did for the ebooks. However, I'm not going to uh, go into that from the catalog right now. Instead, we're going to switch gears a little bit and then go into our uh, databases to show you how to uh, get to articles. So I'm going to go, go ahead and close out there and back at our um, library homepage. To get to our article databases, you need to, uh, down here in this list of links, click the one that says All Kirkwood Databases. Once you click that, you will see a list of all 80 databases that we have currently available at Kirkwood. It's in alphabetical order. Uh, most people don't recognize the names of databases or really know what's in them. So we've also created this uh, subject drop-down list. Okay. So you can um, browse through this, find a subject that best matches what you're looking for, and select it. Um, I'm going to continue with my uh, uh, climate change uh, thing. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's a current event. I could probably also find stuff in debate or environmental science, but I'm going to go ahead and just say current events. So once you select a subject, the first uh, thing on the top here will be this box that says best bets. So these are the databases that we have that we've identified as um, probably the best matches for the type of information that you're looking for. So one of these databases in particular I want to pay attention to, and that's this one called Opposing Viewpoints in Context. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click that database title. And again, if you're doing that um, away from our campus, you're going to see this screen that you're going to have to log in with your K number to equal that password. I'm going to go ahead and click it there right now. And it brings up the database. So Opposing Viewpoints has actually started as a print series made by this publisher. And it, uh, it's really nice because it always has articles um, that includes both sides to any issue within it. And when you're uh, writing a persuasive paper or doing a persuasive speech, it is very important that you address, um, you know, opinions and uh, points of view that are different than what you are trying to argue. It helps to make your argument a lot stronger. All right, so you can either, you know, type in your, um, you know, topic right there, or you can go down here and you can browse uh, from a list. So since my topic is uh, dealing with environmentalism, I'm going to go ahead and click this and see what it has for uh, listings here. So just kind of scanning this, I can see oceans is listed here. And that's probably pretty close to what I was looking for since it's under environmentalism. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, oceans and see what comes up. All right, so first it's going to be a, a short description of the type of stuff that's going to be um, listed here. And then after that, it's going to be a list of all kinds of different resources. And this is the reason why I really, really like this database. 
So the viewpoints are the things that were published in those print books that I was telling you about a little bit ago. It's going to have featured viewpoints, which are like, you know, the, the ones that are really popular. And it's going to have viewpoints, which are just other articles that have been published there. These are all good and great articles. And like I said, uh, it'll have, uh, they'll have articles with both sides of the issues in there. But in addition to that, it's also uh, going to link out to 320 academic journal uh, articles. So it won't just have the viewpoints, it's gonna have articles from other places as well. Uh, 31 reference books, that's like an encyclopedia or something like that. Um, images, eight videos, 99 audio recordings. A lot of these are gonna be from shows that they did on NPR on the subject. Over a thousand newspaper articles, magazine articles, statistics, and websites. So this is really, really a nice place to start your research because it's got all of this stuff uh, right here, easy to get to. Ordinarily, if it didn't have all of these things, if I searched in another database, I'd have to um, search in several different places to find all of these types of um, materials on a subject, okay? So uh, once you, you know, find, and click feature viewpoints and see all seven of them, once I find something that uh, likes, that I like, I can click on the uh, title and then it's going to give me the full text of the article right here. Um, as before, uh, it's got a, a series of tools here. I can print it, I can download it as PDF format, and that is going to um, show me the article the way that it appeared in the book or um, journal that it's from. And for me, I find this a bit easier to read than um, you know, just reading a big line on the screen of text. You can also print out the PDF if you'd like. Uh, it also even has a, a print thing so we can print out the article as well. Uh, like the other database, it also has the Google Drive thing here. So you can send it to Google Drive, but it also has uh, one for OneDrive. And as Kirkwood students, the Kirkwood email address, you all have access to your own personal OneDrive account. Um, one thing that I want to point out to you, I mentioned the permalink before in another database. In this system, they call it a bookmark. So I click that and there's the URL or um, address that I use to get back to this article at another time. And finally, it also has citation tools just like the other one. Uh, this one you, you select from a drop down menu uh, the citation style you want. And uh, there's the MLA one right there. And it also has APA. These look a bit more complete. But again, uh, looking at just giving it a really quick uh, cursory glance, I can tell that it's not exactly formatted correctly and um, it's not double spaced. When I say formatted correctly, um, APA says that only the first letter should be capitalized in the title. So these should all be lowercase. So again, that's just another example. I wanna show you guys that um, this information is good, but it isn't, per it isn't you know, displayed perfectly. So you're going to, going to have to go in and do some modifications. Okay, so um, yeah, other than that, I just, I recommend posing viewpoints, um, you know, and uh, it's, it's a great database to start with. Uh, another database is Academic One File. This is our largest uh, database that we have. So it's got uh, information on just about every topic in there. So if I'm going to continue my climate change and ocean search, I'm going to put climate change here and ocean down there. Now, um, uh, and it put quotes around it because I just, from the drop down, I selected their um, recommendation of ocean and it just automatically did that. So the reason I didn't just put these all on the same line is because if I did, uh, I would get results back that included any of the words. So I might get um, articles that just talked about climate, uh, that just talked about change, or, that, or just talked about ocean. Or I could get things that talked about climate change or just ocean. So when I put um, it between this and, then I will only 
um, get back results that include climate change and ocean. So I don't want to say anything that just talks about climate change. I don't want to say anything that just talks about ocean. I only want things that list both of those. So I separate it with this hand. All right, after I'm happy with my search, I'll go ahead and hit search and our list of results. So over here, we can select the types of results that we want to see. This is uh, academic journals. I could also just look at magazine results, books, newspaper articles, images, and videos. Um, for right now, I'll just keep it on academic journals. At some point in your, you know, if not now, then later in your college career, you're definitely going to have to um, uh, use academic journals. So you'll see that um, different types of results are coming back. This one's an article. Uh, the next one is a report. And it will tell you uh, the type of uh, resource that we're looking at. If we just take the first one, it's going to uh, click that into the title. It'll give me the um, uh, you know title right here, the authors, when it was printed, and the journal that it was in. And it says full text here. This looks pretty short. Oh, but it says to access, I actually have to download the article. And that's fine. Uh, download it. You can just hit download PDF, just like from um, the Opposing Viewpoints database. And there is the article just like it appeared in uh, the journal. And of course, you can print that off or uh, whatever you need to do with it. Um, again, bookmark is uh, how to get the link. And all of these are exactly the same. The tools are exactly the same as they were for opposing viewpoints. Another nice feature is this also has related re resources. I can click that, and it will automatically display for me um, other articles related to this topic. So I think uh, that's about it for uh, journals. Just wanted to give you guys like a little taste so you uh, know how to find them and, and get in there and use them a little bit. I also want to point out um, our citation information guides. So we have both APA and MLA citation information. You can click on whichever one you need. Uh, both of them will have a PDF for this style guide that we created at the Kirkwood Library. Uh, this will list ways uh, to cite uh, various types of things. So you can see here, it'll tell you how to cite books. Um, periodicals, articles from periodicals, uh, website resources, even personal interviews, letters, etc. And at the very last page is a uh, sample reference page. So this is what, like if you were using APA, your reference page should uh, look like. This is a nice thing just to print out and uh, carry along you know, with you when you're uh, writing your paper and have to do uh, resources. Uh, in addition to that, there's a couple of shorter guides that we have, um, a sample paper, and even a template that you can um, use and just like plug in your stuff uh, when you're writing your own research paper. There's also links, um, this one in particular, to this great site, the Purdue Online Writing Lab. Uh, it's very helpful if you can't figure out how to uh, cite something. It's got examples for just about everything. Um, so, and a bunch of videos on citation and, and APA as well. And the MLA guide um, has much the same uh, information, but just on that uh, style instead of APA. And finally, after all of that, I want to show you that um, we have created for distance uh, learners, such as yourselves, a guide just for you. To get there, uh, click on the Explore Our Help Guide. And it'll show all of the guides we have available. Um, we have 50. The one that I'm looking for is called Distance Learning. So I'm just going to scroll down until I see the Distance Learning. Click on that, and it will uh, bring up this guide that we've created for you. Uh, some of the stuff from our homepage is replicated here, so you can see the um, quick search, um, catalog search thing here. Uh, here's a list of popular databases that um, we often get uh, asked how to get to. 
and if you didn't remember how um, to request a book be delivered to your regional center, this it, uh, lists instructions on how to do that too. Uh, it also has a list of local libraries, so you can look for your area and see what a local library might be that you can check out. Uh, if you can't find something here, um, we've got a, a tab here that if you're having problems with EBSCO eBooks, it'll give you some uh, directions on how to do that as well. And if you uh, have forgotten how to do an interlibrary loan, which I showed you before, um, you can click on the interlibrary loan page to get there as well. So basically, um, almost all of the things that I talked about today, uh, you'll be able to find links to somewhere on this distance learning page, okay? And um, it's easy to, to get to the um, address, if you want to write this down, is guides kirkwood.edu backslash dl for distance learning okay so um, that's like I said a, a really good place to go if, if you forget how to uh, get somewhere or, or do anything or find something however I want to encourage you to um, get a hold of us if you have any questions um, just because we have all of these things in the distance learning guide available doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from you because we absolutely do. Don't be afraid to contact us if you need research help, citation help, or whatever it is it might be. Um, thank you for watching and best of luck to you and your studies here at Kirkwood. Have a great day.